guess this is the first film on restoring this Valiset LE uh, Mark II. Uh, well, second film if you count picking it up. But I decided to start pulling it apart. Um, I have downloaded as many of the manuals and the books and bits and pieces as I can. I've been slowly reading through those. I thought I'd just start with the removal of the body from the frame. Uh, I've got the copy of the manual that came with it that explains how to do that. But of course this bike's been bodged with so it's a little bit different. Um, all these gauges and switches and things in the in the toolbox lid there, they're completely wrong. Um, I decided I'm not going to bother trying to save any of the wiring. When you see things like mains cable in there, you figure, yeah, it's probably worth just ripping all that out and going through it all again from scratch. Uh, so I've just cut the wires. Yeah, I'm just slowly trying to disconnect all the things it says to disconnect, and then supposedly you can completely separate the power unit and rear drive and rear wheel from the rest of the bike. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And as always with these things, I either try to, uh, when I pull things apart, like the clutch lever, for example, I put the bolts back in the right holes for now. And anything that's loose, I'll put into bags and, and label it and say where it came from. But uh, I don't think it's going to be too hard to, to strip this down. Um, some of the, the other modifications that have been made to this that have come to light... Uh, this rear corner seems to have been cut away. I think that should be more curved the other way. Maybe it was rusty and someone repaired it that way. Um, I'm pretty sure this plate shouldn't be here. I suspect maybe there was rust there as well. And you can see it's not even straight. <laughs> it's all crooked. So I'm going to have to pull all that apart, see what's going on there. Uh, this could be tricky to fix. It's all been bashed in here. But this is double skinned. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to get in there to fix it. Uh, I should be able to figure out some way to do that, I guess. I think this is correct. You can see it's cracked at the bottom here. Uh, basically, the whole thing needs completely stripping down and rebuilding. Uh, some of the stuff I should be able to rebuild. These floor pans might not be too bad. You can apparently separate the top and bottom of those and um, fix all of that. The leg shields are aluminium, I can probably make those. It's going to be an interesting little project. I have the, the frame separated from the, or the body separated from the engine and drive unit, and the rear wheel, it all sort of just comes apart pretty easily. Oh, hello Milo, you've come to help. Uh, I'm just basically going to strip the whole thing down, it needs it. And it's pretty annoying when you can see how badly it's been put together um, where they've basically used whatever bolt would fit the hole. So there's a mix of metric and imperial and Whitworth. There's things like this where there's like four washers because it's the wrong bolt. Um, same as here. It's just really annoying. Um, I did just cut all the wires. All of that has to be redone. I'm just going to strip the whole lot out. Uh, interestingly, oh, we can't see it at the moment because this is sitting up on the stand, but I think some of the original colour is still under there, that silver grey kind of colour. So, yeah, this whole thing needs to be stripped down. Uh, the power unit's quite interesting. I was wondering what this hose was. It seems to be the, the crank breather. God knows why they've routed it through there. Um, lots of the threads are stripped. Lots of things I think that are probably supposed to be captive. They have nuts and bolts on them and they've used metric like in here and they're those black socket head screws which you shouldn't use those black ones they just rust. Um, if there's any sort of outside stuff they just get all rusty. But uh, Yeah I'll just keep stripping it down. Now I'm starting to make some real progress and getting to see what the state of this is. Um, haven't done anything on the power unit yet. Don't think that looks too bad. Uh, hopefully there's not too much that's been messed around with there. 
Um, some of the captive plates that go on there that hold the back of the body on, one of those was stripped, so things like that are going to need welding up and re-drilling and tapping and all that kind of business. Uh, I removed the front end from the body. I've, I've got a whole spare front end there. I'll have a look at both of them and see which one is the best one to use. Um, there are eight bolts that hold that in place. You can sort of see on this one the four holes. That's what holds the front end to the body. And I removed those and this is what was holding it all together. And this is the kind of thing you get on some of these restorations when, let's just say some of the previous owners uh, aren't quite as fussy as I am around how things go together and what hardware to use. Uh, this is kind of the state of it. So some of these look like special shoulder bolts. So hopefully they'll clean up. Uh, everything you can see, the threads are knackered. These ones are... I don't think these ones were even worth just a motley collection of hardware and all these washers. So some of these bolts have three or four washers under them just to try and get everything spaced out and the washers aren't even all the same. Uh, it's just really... It's not frustrating. It, it's, it's, I'm not angry, I'm disappointed. I guess that's the best way to put it. Uh, but the cool thing is it means it really is a full nut and bolt restoration everything gets stripped down and by the time i'm finished i'll know that i have made everything as good as possible that's kind of the satisfaction in the projects like this i guess and i can see some this is where the back of the body has been really messed around with i think uh i don't quite know what's happened they've cut away some of it so i'm going to have to rebuild all of that uh, that's probably where I'm going to need help to know exactly what the right pattern is. There is actually a body, uh, there's another bike on Trade Me at the moment with some parts, and the parts are being sold separately, so I don't know, maybe I should just see if I can get another body for it. But you can see where it's all been cut away. Um, the sides had some pop rivets put in it. There's some metalwork repairs that are needed where it's cracked. Uh, I don't think no, this isn't going to be original. Looks like someone's attempt at sound deadening. Good news is the petrol tank looks like it's probably good. It doesn't seem like it's rusted anywhere, which is really good because messing around with them is a pain in the neck. Uh, don't know if that's the original tap or not. Possibly. So it looks like the fuel tank will come out uh, again, it's just a matter of taking it apart as much as possible and then seeing what needs to be repaired. But yeah, this is... It's not double skinned, but this box... I don't know if you can remove that. Will I be able to get a spoon or something in there to try and clean some of that up? Like I say, I'm not keeping any of this wiring. I'm just going to strip all of that out. Um, you know, things like this. This all seems to be M5 hardware, which isn't right. So I need to get rid of all of that, try and figure out how to fix all of that up. Uh, were those originally captive? In which case, I probably need to... Uh, I'll get all the right hardware and then I can sort of braise the right nuts in there if that's how it was done. Uh, it's going to be a fun project. And I think what I'm going to do now is... Um, uh, parts are starting to pile up already, so I'm going to get my trestle table out and do the same as I did for the KT250. Um, I'm just going to set up tables here so I can start laying out all the parts and start putting all my plastic bags in a big tub somewhere. I think I've got one somewhere. Oh, yeah, up there. Um, and I might buy some more storage containers or something just so you can keep all the parts nice and together while you while you're reassembling it but to be honest something like this it's reasonably simple oh there's another washer as i take it apart lots of random loose washers and bits and pieces keep dropping out of it yeah, a bit of bit of sleeving there 
but uh, yeah, it's going well. I'm really interested to see what's been bodged around with the electrics and uh, some of the stuff isn't right. So I'm pretty sure the horn, yeah, you can see this is all, this looks homemade. Uh, I'd say that's the original radiator. Luckily that seems in good shape. Uh, the fins need a little bit of straightening, but as long as that's not rusted out, that should be reasonable. I'll flush all of that out. Uh, is this the original carb? No, it's not even really attached. So, there we go. This is where I need to start looking through the parts books and try and understand what these parts are. I don't even know what sort of carburetor that is. Is it enamel? No, I think it's different. So this has got a, a butterfly instead of a slide. Again, this is all stuff I need to learn about. Well, what's the right carb for this? Uh, how should all of this actually go together? That's not right. Unless it's just because that's loose. Yeah, like I say, it's going to be a fun project. Got the little petrol tank out, it's just held on, it's got these straps and then four bolts to hold it in. And the good thing is, we can see in there, looking inside there, and it's not going to focus down in there. But there's just a little bit of surface rust, which is really, really good. Um, I don't know if new fuel tanks are available or not, but uh, yeah, having a nice petrol tank, that's good. So that should clean up quite nicely. Uh, and yeah, I think this might be the original color. It's kind of a silver gray. Uh, pretty sure this isn't original. I don't know if there was anything there before. And the good thing is, with, with all of that off, you can... Pretty sure this is welded to that. So getting that off would be a bit tricky, but there's enough spring in there that I can get something behind there and I can, I can do the, the hammering I need to to get some of this nice again. Um, this is some kind of regulator, I think. So I'm pretty sure the whole electrical system will need redoing. Yeah, it looks like somebody's put a plate on here. Um, I'm, I'm not even going to keep all of these screws. I keep everything until I'm finished. So when you're stripping things down like this, don't throw anything away until you know you're completely finished because there may always be something that you need or there might be something you need as a pattern. Uh, I'm betting this is all rusted out under here, so I'm going to pull all this apart and have a look. Oh, one of them didn't even have a nut on it. Uh, yeah, a lot of these nuts and bolts, they're not done up the right way. There's not shake-proof washers on anything. Um, it's, it's a bit of a mess. But like I say, you just strip it down as much as possible and then you can start seeing what you've got and what you've got to work with and start making a plan for fixing it. So, pretty sure there shouldn't be any holes in this, but you know, all of this you can fix, you can weld it up. Um, if you want to see what, how badly something has to be before you can't fix it or, or see someone who's really good at fixing really crappy stuff and bringing it back to decent condition um, have a look at Carter Auto Restyling so he does amazing metal work to recover um, really badly damaged stuff that other people would just throw away probably so pretty sure if Kyle can do that I, I should be able to do something like this get in here fix all of this yeah it's just this back bit um, because when something's been cut away like this you don't know how to replace it if it's just bent or, or damaged, you know how to fix it. You've got the pattern. But, you know, the, there's something missing here, and I need to figure out what that is. I think the rest of it looks okay. Um, I might end up remaking the little aluminium things 
they seem a bit loose, they might just be able to be tightened up. The guards all seem okay. So yeah, I'll see how far I can I can strip this body down. It's worth pointing out that these mounting bolts for the front end, they are different sizes. The two at the front are bigger. Um, so two different sizes there. Um, even though the bolts I've got are the wrong ones, that's why they're one of the reasons why they're different sizes is because they are supposed to be. I think I have this body pretty much stripped down as far as it'll go now. Uh, or maybe I could take the, the toolbox lid off. Sort of, it's held in with wire, so if you bent one of these out, this should pop off, um, which I'll probably need to do so I can repair the holes in it. This is all dinged up. Uh, I worked out what some of these little black things were. That's what somebody has used as grommets around the holes. They were in those holes there where the wires went through and they've just been hot glued in place. It's just, just, uh, not good. Uh, the other interesting thing I found here is there is no rust here. So somebody had added this plate on top and this piece of diamond tread plate underneath it. Um, crookedly you can see that's where the actual seat mount goes and that does not line up uh, I have no idea why I'm guessing they were just trying to reinforce it here for some reason um, it's got some oil canning in it but that's good I, I can just weld up the holes I can fix all of this up um, you can sort of pull the these edges out a bit um, so I should be able to get in behind there. All this can be straightened. This edge along here might be a little bit fiddly. I need to clean all that up and see what state it's in. Um, I may take this down to my local sandblaster, who's literally four doors down the road, and uh, get them to blast it for me so I can start from bare metal. But... Uh, yeah, there's the rest of the bits. So I think for today I'm just going to stop working on the bike now. I've got other things I need to do like uh, fit the DRO to my lathe, the Riley of course. Um, I want to reseal around the sunroofs in the Land Rover. I've got this uh, it's protective weather strip type tape you use on cars on the edges of doors and things i want to see if that works better than the paint protection film on the uh, sunroofs of the land rover to stop them leaking but i think that's pretty good progress for the day uh, this is my box of things i think are junk but aren't going to throw away until right at the end so all of that wiring will go in there uh, the number plate came off i don't think that's the original lamp I would say not. Uh, so that'll be something I'll have to get. But it's a good point to finish for the day, I think. I've got everything cleaned up, put on stands, put away. I did do the final little bit of dismantling, which was pull the, the uh, toolbox cover off. Uh, the wire actually broke. <laughs> it was already cracked in the corners. As soon as I tried to move it, it just snapped off. So I just pulled that off. Uh, this will all need fixing, of course. But i uh, been looking for... I thought the engine number was supposed to be here somewhere, but I've got... It's got the plate uh, on the, the front end. I don't know that that's supposed to be there, but that does have the engine number on it. Um, but I thought there was a number stamped here somewhere. Uh, the other thing is the radiator does look good because radiators are not cheap, as I found out on my um, Riley project. And 
I think the rest of this should clean up quite nicely. Uh, I think hopefully these haven't been cut off. I suspect these holes are extra. I can weld all of that up. Uh, this has been welded up. I should uh, uh, it's got oil in it. So, that's the sump oil. I think on the rear end here there's filler plugs. I think there's a drain plug and a fill plug or a level plug. That's, that's the rear brakes. Uh, one of the shock ends has come off and it looks like these are just kind of, it's almost like a grease gun. I don't know if that's correct or not. Um, this kind of wraps around the, the top of the spring. It kind of locks on like that. See the gearbox linkage, how that works. Uh, this is the clutch. Yep, that hose does just seem to be a breather. This is the hand start. I'm going to make sure this isn't going to fall off. Whoops. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, I might prop it up at the back a little bit. I'll put a stand under it just to make sure it's all pretty stable. Um, twin flat cylinders. So, of course, because it's flat, the induction pipe has to be slightly offset because the cylinders are slightly offset. Um, and I think on the original ones, I don't think the horn goes here. I think there's meant to be like an air filter here because the carburetor sits behind there. The gear knob was sort of glued on. Uh, the frame itself, apart from the extra holes, all looks fine. Uh, that probably just needs a good clean up and a repaint. I don't even know that that needs blasting. I'll know more once I actually start stripping the whole thing down. Front ends, I've got two of them. I've got the one over there and then this other one. Uh, I don't know which one's going to be the best one to use. This wheel looks a bit strange. It's aluminium. There's a, a weld there. I don't know that that's normal. Um, maybe that's just how they were made, but I doubt it. I don't know if you can see a weld on this one. The wheels look good. I think the spokes all seem pretty good. A little bit of surface rust. It's going to need new tyres, of course. Um, so what are they? Three by nineteen. This is well, well cracked and gone. Uh, somebody had. This has been a bit changed, I think. Um, might need to sort out the hand grip, the throttle. I still haven't found any marks or any indication on the carburetor what it is. There's a number there, two nine five dash one. So that's the butterfly. That's some sort of adjustment. Not sure where the choke is. Maybe that. Dunno. Bit of a mystery. But uh like I say, I think that's where I'm going to end this today. Uh, so all up, that took me, it's 11 o'clock now. I think I started about eight, so three hours to strip it down. We'll strip it down this far and start getting organized.